This is gonna be the first inaugural episode of Best Buds. So thank you so much for joining us. We have a nice long show for you today, which is gonna involve uh, some product testing, some product testing, and some general convo. Let's get this started. Oh yeah, so today we're gonna go ahead and start it off with a specific type, type of strain. Our first strain that we're gonna start today with Best Buds is gonna be a Master Kush. Master mm. Kush itself is gonna be a land race strain. Uh, we're gonna take two phenotypes from the Hindu mountainous region, uh, or Hindu Kush itself, and then they take two land race strains and then breed those together, which gives you Master Kush. Pure indica cannabis, which has some really heavy sedative effects uh, really gives you that less, it gives you a little bit of release from anxiety. It also gives you a nice relaxed uh, euphoric state. And it's amazing for a little bit of uh, uh, getting out of, um, you know, not being able to sleep. Uh, what's that called again? Uh, insomnia. Yeah, getting rid of insomnia. It really helps you out and it allows you to just relax and rest. And it's, it's really nice. Um, the origins are kind of unknown, even though it just comes from the Hindu uh, region, it doesn't come from a breeder, which I really like that because it has some really OG uh, genetics in there. I mean, these are literally been on the planet for, or planet for what now, 4,000 years it's been being used or something? Probably millions like? of, I mean, yeah, millions of years just been discovered maybe 4,000 years ago. Cannabis has been being used for thousands of years in different cultures. Uh, the big thing that they used to use this for was, what'd you say in your uh, studies? Uh, monks started using it. They discovered it, Muslim monks and everything, and they were, they were using it up and uh, sharing it with people. And then it got out into the world and whatnot, and it just blew up after that. Now, weren't monks some of the first people to brew beer? Yeah, monks, also? man, they're, you know, I think that's the thing way back in the day, you know, religion and whatnot, they're the ones that kept and held on to all the knowledge to keep people down, I feel. And then, you know, so the monks had all this knowledge and they had the book. So obviously they were the ones inventing it because they had the resources of the yeah, knowledge. Absolutely. I mean, obviously they did a pretty good job because I know a lot of monks actually come from the Hindu region, which is a very mountainous region over right above Afghanistan, kind of in that Middle Eastern area, kind of going closer to uh, Nepal, if you will, which has a lot of these Kush varieties sitting in these mountains. Um, Indica itself is a very squatty plant that's very short and it's meant to be in these very, very um, arduous regions which has very low water. So they don't get really big like the sativa does or a hemp plant does even. Uh, so they can grow inside these little crevices in the mountains, which you'll get a lot in uh, the Andes Mountains in South America. Uh, you happen a lot in the Hindu Kush region. Um, but it's really cool because especially when you have two land races that come together to bring you such a Beautiful indica, man. That's amazing. I'm an indica guy. I don't know about you. I like to get, I like to feel really sedated just because I prefer I, indica too. I just have back problems and you know, with it, with kind of uh, relieving some of that muscle tightness, kind of relieves some of my pain that I have in my lower back, which I really, really, really enjoy. <laughs> right. Plus these get me a little bit too buzzed to even remember that it's not a sativa because sativas kind of make me a little jolty and jittery and kind of energized, which, which I like but it's not that full yeah. on, full spectrum raw dab we've got right here, so. And if you guys don't know what a raw dab is, please, hashtag raw dabs. This is a raw dab. This raw is dabs. Full spectrum, keep that in mind. If you don't know anything about concentrates, visit elevatepresents.com to learn a little bit more about what concentrates really, really are. And we're actually writing a, a nice, beautiful blog on Elevate, well, not Elevate, on cannabis concentrates now, the history of them, what the different kinds are, you know, what's a butter, what's a wax, what's a sauce, what's a this, what's a that, what's in whatnot. So I'm excited about that. I'm learning a lot. Yeah, I'm learning a lot too. And it's really cool to understand how how many cannabinoids are really in just this one little plant. It's yeah, you hear THC and CBD. There's <laughs> about another 131, 36 in there. So, <laughs> you know, when you hear those two, you're missing full spectrum type stuff, so. Let's get some of this ground up while we're going through the product. And today, what are we reviewing, Steve? We're gonna review uh, the Sidekick by Seven Floor Vapes. Um, it comes in a, uh, it's almost like a full tactical case. Like, yeah, it's fully in there cause it's a portable vape. So you want to take everything with you. Comes with the place for batteries, chargers and stuff can go back here, but, uh, we're going to do this. Yeah. Um, we're, I guess we're also going to show this product right here. Uh, we were introduced to this. It, it really works great for the sidekick. Um, phenomenal. So, uh, it's all set up. 
Um, to use this thing, you press and hold it right there. One thing we're gonna show today is uh, our favorite way. Uh, our favorite, my favorite way to do this, I don't know about Alex's, is uh, to go ahead and uh, mix it up with a little bit of wax and a little bit of uh, herb. And uh, I think that's the best way to consume concentrates, in my opinion, is just put the concentrates back where it came from. Uh, the herbs are gonna go ahead and absorb all the lipids and fats and everything. So you're gonna, it's just, the, it's a lot cleaner, less messier and. Uh, so this unit is good to go with uh, concentrates and dried herbs out of the box? Yeah, yeah, it comes with a little piece to go in there to where you can do beautifully, wonderfully flavorful low temp dabs. Um, it's not, you know, these vapes are completely different than a pen vape. Uh, this is designed for dry herbs and it's also designed to work with concentrates where pens are one thing. So they work on two totally different heating methods. Something that's designed like this is designed to operate at low temperatures, which is going to give you much more flavorful uh, concentrate hits, but it's always going to leave the lipids and oils in there. So you need to clean it more often, do everything like that. Maintenance is all about that. I have, have used this product, I understand the product. So we're going to start it out at uh, eight. That's where I like it. Eight gives me a higher temperature. It's also going to vaporize, you know, a more full spectrum of the CBDs because CBDs and other THCs, they're vaporizing from about 228 degrees, 212 degrees, up to 428 degrees. So doing research on vapes, I see a lot of these things that don't go all the way up to 428 degrees. Just gonna say, I don't know if that's the right thing to do or not to do. This is the mouthpiece, so you know when it's in your pocket, it's all done up nice and whatnot. It comes out, if you break it, it does, does that. You can change it out. We got these wonderful things right here um, that hooks it up to any kind of water pipe. This goes up to a 10 millimeter female up to a 19 millimeter male, so it works with a lot of stuff. Um, we're just gonna puff it right out of the machine as if we were in the woods today. Um, the lid, it's all aluminum and stainless steel on the inside. Uh, what's neat about this is it's the only one that has a lid that has a stir tool in it. Um, it's really, really awesome about that. Um, because most all portable vapes, they'll say there's a hybrid and this is a hybrid, but it mostly works on convection or I mean conduction and that's because that is more efficient for vaporizers that are portable, whereas convection is more efficient uh, on the on the herb and how the user uses it. So there's two things that you gotta be efficient on, electricity or the herb. So this is how I do it. Um, and that, that just goes ahead and puts it right on, it puts the, it puts the dab on the rod. So it's not lotion on the skin, and but then the dab this... on the rod. <laughs> it puts the dab on the rod, it does what it's told. This is the air intake, so what we got here is a vortex cooler. This extends uh, the vapor path out a lot, and then in full length, it's up to 16 inches of vapor path. So you're gonna get a cool Oh, a cool so the hit. screw itself, the vapor comes from the top and then travels down like this, and that's what gives it that, all that 16 inches, because, I mean, this thing's only what? Three and a half, four inches? Yeah, that's 11 inches. That thing is 11 inches going around like that. So it gives it a lot of time, and then it, you're touching a lot more surface area, and that just helps cool it down. This thing is easy to clean. Um, it's designed all for cleanliness, for use, and everything. It's not about using it now, it's about using it later. Well, speaking of using it now, maybe we can fire it up. Let's fire it up. So, crush up some bowl and... Yeah, so I crushed this thing up. This is one of the things we got laying around. We uh, actually just did a pretty cool review on this with one of our um, resident reviewers, Maddie. Uh, this is called the Mamba uh, electric grinder. This is battery powered, and man, this thing's got some power. It's basically like a Black & Decker drill for your herbs, but it has this nice, really cool funnel right here at the tip, which just so happens to fit right inside the sides kick. So this, let's, go ahead. This is, the, this is its sidekick. They were meant to be buddies. <laughs> it's just... And now I was looking on the web and they always say like, never leave home without your sidekick. And it looks like uh, we got them both here. These guys are probably best buds if you think about it. They are, they work <laughs> together hand in hand like you and I. Oh man, that thing is strong. Bada bing, bada boom. Bada bing, bada boom. <laughs> so a uh, little bit there. And then uh, anytime you get a little bit overfill, you can try to push it in there or just go. And then now with the tool, the stir tool having dabs on it already, you can just put that in there? Yeah, I just put it right in there and then as that heats up, I'm gonna turn it on right now. The thing vibrates when it gets up, so when it vibrates, Mr. Alex will begin oh, nice. to puff on it. 
Well, man, I vibrated, man. Yeah, so good, am right? I up, ready to go? Yeah. Can I try? So I just yeah. pull it. Yeah. No, I don't have to push anything? No, you already pressed something. Um, so oh, yeah, man. it's going. That smells good. One thing I would suggest always is now, just while you're using it, let this become your little uh, fidget spinner on the oh, side. Oh, it's so des it's designed so your thumb can use it. Is that what the? Uh, I think so. Yeah, that's exactly. Oh say. I I man, so. that is so cool. Well, cheers. Man, um, there's some strong Kush coming out of this right now. The flavors on this. Kush has a really distinct um, uh, terpene profile. Um, so like the most common terpenes that you'll find in any cannabis is gonna be pinanol, alpha, and beta. Uh, pinanol beta is that piney, cushy taste that you always get on almost pretty much about 80% of all strains. It just has a very, very unique taste to it. And it has that nice, almost, um, what is that coniferous taste? It has like a kind of like a, it kind of tingles the tongue just a little bit. And you'll find that in almost all OGs, almost all Kush strains, it really does just set it off a little bit. And I'm even getting like a little bit of citrus out of that. It's, it's not bad. It might be from the tangy wax. The tangy wax, yeah. Ah, uh, that makes sense. Oh, oh, oh. <coughs> Man, you don't even tell you're getting <laughs> that big of a rip until you're finished. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so that's a sidekick. Uh, I feel it's a decent machine. Um, I, you know, the qualities on it are pretty good. It feels um, very sturdy. It's very durable. Yeah, it's all made out of aluminum. Uh, it's probably the thickest aluminum housing on the market for a portable. And uh, that's oh, this how you just can goes like this? So yep, you can just go a, like, so you can just go like this? Yep. Yeah, so you can hook it up to any rig, any water pipe. Um, it's really universal, uh, but yeah. Oh, oh, oh man, I don't think I've ever done that before where you just hook it straight up to a water pipe. Man, that's awesome. I better, better test this again. Don't forget to stir it a little bit. Um, but yeah, you always want to remember stir all, not this one, but all conduction style vapes because it's only the outside that's heating it up. And there is hybrid, the air is coming around and going through it and collecting the heat, but it needs to be stirred up. It's getting dark in there. Yeah, that's, so let's, it, it's definitely a higher temperature, and uh, but that's when you're going to get full, full spectrum uh, vaporization. Because remember, if you're not taking it to 428, which I don't think this is quite going to there, you're not going to get full spectrum. THC, uh, THC A, I think it is, or THC VA. Yeah, it's THC VA. It uh, it actually vaporizes at 428, and I think CBC or CBGC does. So there's you know, you need the, the, the higher temp. Now, you said CBG. CBG is very unique, uh, very sought after, because isn't it, like, that's where all CBs start off as, right? Is, is that? Yeah, I'm not too versed into that stuff. I kind of know a little bit, but. Uh, I know we got a, we've done a lot of work on our website to describe it, but again, it's hard to remember all 133 compounds. It's, uh, it's absolutely ridiculous sometimes. Uh, just to think that one plant can have so many different types of, um, uh, what is the Medicines. Word? Yeah, medicines, because they all have different things. Like THCV is well known to uh, suppress appetite, which usually doesn't happen with me as far as that's concerned when I get a little scone because uh, my appetite is always increasing a little bit. And they call those the munchies. I call that about breakfast, lunch, and dinner every day. Second breakfast is one of my favorites. Uh, other than that, Let's go, I wanna pack up another one of these. Yeah, I yeah, like that, man. That was a lot of flavor. And I like this thing. Like, I feel like if I was ever rolling anything, you'd be like, Bang! Yeah, that thing is Whomp. pretty cool. For blunts or something. Yeah. Oh, what's up, Tiggs? What up, little girl? Man, that really does pack that very fast. Yeah, it's easy. It's on point. It really is. Like, I've used, I've used, um, the funnels before and the funnels are shit sometimes. Like they're not that good in my opinion. Hmm. Cause you end up spilling all this stuff all around the funnel and then you still have a mess and it doesn't clean up itself. Trust me, I'm always getting yelled at for my piles everywhere. Man, did you hear about that fire though that just happened out in California? The, the, 
Loot Lux Leaf or whatever one that got burnt down was like award-winning multi-million dollar. I heard something about it, but, Dude, but right. say what? Tell me this, all right. So they are one of the biggest grow companies in the entire nation, even in the world. They have award-winning strains, their breeders are killer, and they have been just booming, or should I say blooming here in the past few months. <laughs> <laughs> They've had one of the biggest losses in pot history. They lost millions upon tens of millions of dollars of growing pot because one of their employees was smoking a cigarette. Uh oh. Well, not smoking it, but must have put it out in the wrong place or something, or? I don't know, man. They blamed it on the cigarette, but who blames yeah. it on the cigarette? Is it the cigarette or was it the person smoking the cigarette, you know? Man, can you imagine? Ugh, I'll be so upset. Yeah, it's probably a nightmare, but hopefully nobody was hurt, nobody was bad, and you know, you gotta find the, the half full attitude and move on, cause you know, yeah, someday you, this planet's gonna get hit with a gosh darn freaking meteor or something, you know? Can you insure Ooh. pot? Does... They do, they have, uh, I remember back in the day um, when cannabis first became legal here in Colorado Springs, uh, I had a dispensary and uh, that's, you know, they at, even at that time they had uh, cannabis insurance. Really? It was expensive and I didn't have it. <coughs> what did they insure? They insure the loss? Yeah. Or was it specific like, like fire, flood or? Oh, I don't know. I didn't look too much into it. I just knew it was cannabis. You were like, nope. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <coughs> oh man. I am baked. What up, y'all? <laughs> Whoa, man. This is going, uh, this thing is amazing, dude. How is that still <laughs> flavorful like that? Is it just the vaporizer in general? Just uh, that's that vaporizers, you know. Um, they don't combust. The combustion definitely causes different flavors. And maybe there's some people that, that like the combustion, you know. Like, I, I don't, I like smoking joints, but I like the taste of a blunt a little better. Um... I know that I definitely prefer vaping over a blunt or a joint. What's the, I heard you um, kept talking about conduction, convection. What is the difference between vaporizing and smoking in general? Uh, yeah, what is the difference, right? Because no matter what, you're bringing up small particles into something and inhaling them. Um, I'm not a dictionary, I don't know. This is just something I'm thinking of and whatnot. Um, I'm gonna guess and say that smoking has a lot more particles in it than vaping does, <coughs> where vaping is, only includes particles that can boil out of it, such as oils, where smoking is burning actual solids oh, and everything. Oh, it's like burning the carbons and, and it's, it's very hazardous as far as like... Yeah, cause so, okay, so vaping, you're not even taking up any carbons because all the carbons are in the plant material. Oh. You know, and even when you're vaping, you actually leave fats and lipids behind. So there's less there. Is that so. why when I smoke a fat doink, I'm just like. <coughs> yeah, it hurts, it hurts. It hurts. Oh man. Did you guys ever see people that just absolutely rip globs, like a gram into like a 45 millimeter bucket? I mean, they look cool, but the face of the person doing it, absolutely, they look like they're in pain. They look like they're enjoying it at first, the eyes go crossed and they're like, oh, and the next thing you know, it's just like instant sweats. It looks like their ears are red and they're getting hot. I call that the dab ear. I don't know if you guys ever had dab ear before, but you just take a ripping, roaring hot dabs. Cause that's what I used to do. I used to take, you heat up, the, you heat up your bag, well, everybody did. And then you just rip a hot dab and you cough. And that's how you, you know, my brother always used to tell me, you have to cough to get off. And I always thought that's what you had to do. You just, and you, you know what I mean? You hold it in as long as possible. But then you look into the actual studies of it, the science behind it. You absorb your, what are they, brachials, bronchi? I'm not a, I'm not a lung doctor. They can only absorb within the first three and a half seconds of your breath, right? Something like that. I think we did a report on that earlier this year, but I, I really can't remember because we do so many really cool educational things online if you haven't checked that out yet. Uh, but dude, I mean, and then you have the people, they're like, I get so high afterwards. You're like, no, you did not. You're yeah, just lightheaded. Yeah. You're just literally lack of oxygen and your brain is depleted of, of any type of necessary life oxygen. Vaping is 80 to 90% less carcinogens. So, uh, you know, like. Cause it's just pure extracted oils? Or it's raw dabs. It's raw, hashtag raw dabs. Hashtag raw dabs. Hashtag raw dabs. Don't forget, 
Hashtag raw dabs. If you guys don't know what a raw dab is, it's literally just this beautiful little flower that we call cannabis. It literally is a full spectrum extraction. It has all the ability to give you what concentrates need, but it's in this really nice plant form that you can put in joints and vaporizers. The way the creator created it just the way it meant to be intended. Now, we have taken it a long way. I think that, that um, what is it, 40 years ago, cannabis was um, a little, you know, a little less strong. Uh, you know, you're seeing cannabis strains up in the like 35% testing ranges now, when back then they were two to 3%. Technically speaking, 40 years ago, compared to now, it's what, 350 times stronger. That's crazy. <laughs> I mean, it's crazy what man does to shit. Like, you know, like taking it from 2% to 30 some percent, taking a wolf, turn it into a little critter like this. <laughs> like, it's it's crazy what, what man does. Oh, Thanks, because it's pretty cool. It's I, entertaining. I for sure enjoy it, man. Man, I tell you what. I am baked. Yeah, I'm good. <laughs> I'm good to go. Oh man, have you guys ever tried infused beer before? Uh, no, actually not. No, man. All right, so if you guys haven't seen these infused beers before, there's these new types of uh, infused beers, AKA high PAs, which have no alcohol content. It's basically the O'Doul's of an edible. Okay. So, so you take this, you know, I think it might have like 0.3, 0.3% or something like that, whatever, 0.2%, whatever makes it a legal non-alcoholic beer. And then they just throw like 100 milligrams in for a beer, a pure THC. But they also have CBD ones. But the thing is, they're not allowed to sell it alcohol with THC. So it's like drinking all the beer, getting all the But why effects. not? Because I can go buy a beer and I can get a joint and I can sit here and have a good time, but they won't let you no. So, like, actually, I mean, I Uncle tried. Sam's looking out for me. So right? I got, I, I actually, I learned very, 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 very quick that you're not allowed to smoke vape pens at bars. Yeah. Uh, yeah, they don't like that. Yeah. They, I'm not saying I heard it from a friend. I'm not saying I did it, but they do not like that. Don't do that. Bad. Yeah. Your, your friend will get kicked out quick. Uh, yeah. But uh, yeah, so they have this thing and, and they take them and the high PA, the one I saw, they, they actually just infuse it with THC or CBDs, but no alcohol, which makes no sense to me. Like you said, I want to drink a full six pack of beer and be drunk, not drink a full six pack of beer and be full. If I'm going to get full, it's going to be off a of Totino's pizza and some pizza rolls or pe bagel bites or something yeah. like that. It's not going to be become this fake six pack. I mean, I would love to get high, but I mean, it's most of these beers are to me, the whole thing, like I get the, I get the edibles. I get it because smoking, vaping, whatever, it's not as healthy for you as breathing plain air or eating something. But with edibles, you can't control it. It takes so long to get the high. And you know what? That plant was put here and used to, to consume, like, it, I'm a connoisseur of herb, I kind of feel. I've been doing it a long time. I smoked a lot of different kinds, vaped a lot of different kinds. And you know, I need to taste the herb. I want to see the herb and not the, uh, you know, not the, not the drinking something and tasting something. I want the herb, so, yeah. Now, do you, do you prefer herb or do you prefer uh, alcohol? Herb all day. Yeah, I mean, I like, you know, I, I'm from Ohio. I'm a, I'm a good old boy. I like whiskey. Yeah. I like me some whiskey. Yeah. But when it comes down to it, man, I've been smoking herb way longer than I've been drinking. And I smoke herb every day. I rarely get drunk, you know, to the point where I really am just blacked out, unless you see my Snapchat story, which, which about recently, it's been a couple times, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Would you like first hits? No, I'm you actually good? ripped, man. This Let's... guy smokes way more than I do. Look at that. I like smoking. What's your guys' preferred method of um, consumption? Do you guys enjoy smoking joints? Do you enjoy a nice rig? Do you guys enjoy concentrates? Do you enjoy concentrates with dabs? What do you yeah. guys like to do? Yeah. I mean, yeah. what's your favorite way? I know you love raw dabs. Yeah, raw dabs is my favorite, you know, but to each their own, man. You know, I, 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 my neighbor, all he does, he will not do anything but a joint, so. 
I got a, I know a couple people like that. And they always have a pocket full of joints. Yeah. 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 It never goes anywhere. Be like, hey, you want to hit this? No, man. You just want a joint. And like, yeah, I guess. And he pulls out another joint and he lights it up himself. And you're like, awesome. Actually, I just met a guy at a bar last week. He did the exact same thing. Like just straight up. Uh, I asked him for a lighter. He's like, no. I only have matches. I thought he was just saying no to me at first. He's like, no, like just get out of here. And I was like, oh, cool. And I went out there and I lit a cigarette. Unfortunately, I was kind of tipsy. And I might drink a cigarette. Just don't tell anybody. Uh, but he came out and he's like, you want to you want a joint? I was like, hell yeah, I want a joint. This guy had rolled up so many joints and he didn't even have them in a container. He just shoves them in his pocket. <laughs> yeah, then you get at home and you got a big old pile of broken joints. <laughs> I've done that before. <laughs> and then he's like, I've kept the same jeans. I don't buy jeans. And I was like, all right, that's cool. And he kept telling me how he likes to sew his jeans back to pieces. That's what I do. Yeah, I mean, why? It's just a wasteful economy when you just throw stuff away. Yeah. Paid good money for those, right? One pair that's jacked up when you get a hole in the knee, take the jacked up and you can make I don't know, 10, 15 patches out of it. So that bitch on the knee got a brand new pair of pants and it's hip now. I see these kids wearing that. They're paying $170 for you know? ripped jeans. Yeah. Thanks grandma for teaching me how to sew. Cause I'm hip now. <laughs> what's, uh, <laughs> what's next? I'm baked. <laughs> I think that's it then. I think that's our thing. I want to say, uh, really? This is cool. <laughs> this is I had a fun. good time, actually. I did, man. Um, thank you all for joining us on this. We really, really appreciate it. Thank yeah. you to the live people. Thanks, um, guys, so much for stopping in. Again, we are Best Buds. I'm Alex. I'm Steve. Elevate your city. Hashtag. Hashtag elevate your city. Hashtag raw dabs. Hashtag <laughs> hashtag. We'll see you next time. Peace. Oh, man, I don't know why I threw up. I didn't even say that. The, it's, the, it's, the arm, it's the arm out first, it's the arm out, duck face, and then the peace out. And then say, I'm a little teapot. Short and stout. stout, this is my, my bowl. Yeah, I don't know how to go. All right. Nice. <laughs>